Hey everybody, Chris Fernandez. Well, this is going to be a quick little tutorial here. As you read the title, this is going to be a knockdown stitch in the way that I figured out how to do it for the old custom work software. Now, a lot of you out there have software that you purchased through Baby Lock, which was designer um, Designers Gallery. Before Designers Gallery, there was Custom Works. Custom Works included Quilt Works, Hoop Works, Dancing, all that stuff. And then the company decided, you know what? We don't want to do this software anymore, so we're going to retire it. And they left everyone in the dark, right? And even Masterworks, remember Masterworks? That was a that was a software where everybody was spending a thousand dollars or more to do digitizing. It was a great, great, intense software. I mean, it was powerful. But if you don't have the doggle for the later version, you can't even use it. I have custom work. I have Masterworks too. My dog, my dongle, blue, and I can't even use it. I have Customworks one. Custom. I have Masterworks one, and Masterworks one. Uh, you needed the key code and then my computer fried so I went to install it on my new computer and it would not accept the key code because it doesn't transmit to the uh, headquarters because headquarters doesn't exist anymore at Baby Lock for software so it wouldn't accept it so I contacted Baby Lock and I said it's not taken and they must have a whole bunch of new people that work there because she said yes it will just enter your key code I'm like I've done the key code but the way that this old software works is it communicates with headquarters to make sure that the key code is correct and blah 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 and it's not doing it so i have software that's sitting there masterworks it doesn't work anyway i i, I switched over to brilliance and love and brilliance but i still have custom works and custom works is a great powerful editing tool for all your basics right and this is what we're going to look at today we're going to look at how do we get a knockdown stitch with custom works for towel monogram embroidery so i'm thinking like how can i do this because you know i'm not a super super brain when it comes to software because i really never studied it that much you know i, I was more into the technical setup of a sewing machine so now that i'm getting more into embroidery you know i'm getting also getting more into the uh, uh, software programs so let me show you how i figured out how to do a knockdown stitch and this is if you have a better way of doing it and you know this hey please comment below and let us know but this is how i figured it out and how i'm going to do it okay so first of all i want to set up a hoop i'm going to set up a hoop i'm just going to do a four by four hoop here now if you notice my left little arrow here going to the left here is some color bars it looks like the rainbow flag and you click that and a hoop will come up now usually it comes up with the last uh hoop that you used previously if you need to set a new size hoop up, you go over here to view, select hoop, and then you select your uh, language for your, your uh, sewing machine, embroidery machine. Mine's PES, which is Baby Lock Brother. Okay, And then you select the hoop size. And here's 100 by 100 for me is actually the 4x4. Four four. So I'm going to hit apply. Okay. And it's already there. See, it's already there. Okay. Now, I'm going to do the monogram. And this is going to be really, really simple, guys. You're not going to believe how simple this is. <laughs> I'm like, wow, it took me forever to figure this out. All right, so now I'm going to click the monogram. See, the three initials, monogram. Click that, bring your arrow down, and then left-click it to deposit it onto your, inside your frame. Now I want to move it over. Whoops, that was a mistake. Uh-oh, what do I do? Go up to edit and do undo. There we go. All right. Oh, I just did it again. Oh, I'm so used to my Futura software where I have to click on the outside. I messed it up again. So edit, undo. So how do I get out of this so I don't do it no more? Well, I'm going to click this little arrow over here on the left. Watch my cursor as I come over. Arrow on the left, select there. Now, if I click anywhere on the page, it's not going to duplicate it. Okay. When you're using different softwares, you got to get used to everything. Now I'm going to click it to highlight it. Then I'm going to hit the fit page. And then I'm going to make it a little uh, smaller. I'm going to go down here and make it smaller and then up here follow my arrow up here i'm going to hit center so i centered it okay now next i need to duplicate this i found out by duplicating it this is the trick right click copy right click paste there we go now i'm going to go on the outside and left click and there it is i want to see this in real in the real stitch out though so over here on the left is a 3d box i'm going to click le left click that and then i can see it stitch out in real time 
let's change the color so I could see a little bit better. So let's go here. Let's just do a, let's just do that color. Oh, I got highlighted first. There we go. All right, let's just do that color right there. No, I guess not. Well, I got to do this. Oh, because I have two. That's right. So let's just undo all that. Let's just do undo the color. Let's just leave it alone for now. Sorry about that, guys. All right, I'm ahead of myself because I'm excited because I figured this out. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the first text. Okay? Highlight the first, first text. Now, uh, then I'm going to left-click it off because I play back and forth to see what will work, what won't work. But here's what I'm going to do. Up here, it looks like a puzzle piece. It says auto stipple. I'm going to left-click that. Okay, I hope I haven't confused you so far because I'm doing all these different little clicks and everything like that to test it out. All right, now, when I come down, you see there's a little plus sign. Now, listen to me. If you're watching this on your cell phone, stop right now and go to your large desktop computer with a big monitor, okay? I know a lot of you like to use those little cell phones and you can't see crap on those things, especially at our age, our, our middle age and older people who need those special glasses. I hear from my friends all the time, oh my God, I left my, 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 my readers at, uh, at my, my other house. Like, guys, please get the big screen monitor. Stop pretending you're 21 years old with perfect vision, okay? Except the fact that you need the bigger screens now and you need more lighting also. Okay, we're all in this together. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. It's part of the aging process. Okay, get the bigger monitor. All right. Okay, it's the only way you're going to see it. And then when you see it, then you will stop asking a million questions because you've seen it in person. You understand. I'm a teacher. I know. I see these things and I understand people and I get it. All right, here we go. Now, you see this plus sign? Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the lay the plus sign with the bottom right at the bottom of the top of that peak of that line. Okay, left click. It's going to leave a dot and when I move it away. Then I'm going to go over here to another point. Watch where I'm clicking it. Right to this point, left click. Then I'm going to go over here and click it here, left click. I'm going to go down here, left click over here left click so i'm trying to line it up as best as i can right here left click back up here left click because this isn't going to be perfect guys but it's going to help okay it's going to help now here i could have moved this a little out further so now i'm going to hit apply right here at the right. But before I hit apply, I want to change the density and the stitch. This is only the third or fourth time I've done this, guys, and I'm so excited I had to write this video. So the density, I'm going to bring the density down to 1.5. Oh, 1.5. And the stitch length, I'm going to leave at 2.0. Okay, let's try that. And let's hit apply. Nothing's happening. Well, let me oh, let me do my little arrow there. There we go. So I had to touch that little arrow back here at the left. Okay, so now you see that I've got a stipple. But the stipple is on top of my lettering. So now what I do is I go over here to the right, and it says auto stipple. I'm going to right-click, and I'm going to go move first. So now it's going to go on top, which means it's going to be behind my lettering, okay? Now, I don't need two lettering, so I'm going to go to the bottom here. Let me show you. There's two letterings now. I can get rid of one. So I'm going to do the left click, and I'm going to do right click, and I'm going to do delete. There we go. Now, I want to fix the stipple, make it a little bit bigger. So I'm going to go over here on the right, left click the auto stipple, and then I'm just going to drag this out a bit here. Everywhere I think I may need something, I'm going to drag it out just a bit. Maybe I want more up here. A little bit here. And then I'm going to hold and move it around just to give it a little bit evenness. Okay? And then I'm going to left click. 
not bad but not right so left click it again and move it there now this is going to be practice for you all where when you do your little dot clicking with your with your plus sign that's where it's going to really make a difference now because this is a knockdown stitch for a towel your prominent uh visual when you're looking at the towel is going to be the lettering anyway you just need a dot knockdown stitch behind but that stippling to me looks a little bit loose yet right so let's just click on the stippling and let's see hmm should i do a tighter density or should i do maybe a longer stitch let's just play the stitch length let's do 2.5 hit apply oh look at that you thought maybe doing a shorter stitch length would make a difference but see how 2.5 made a difference right now density do i want to do more than 1.5 because you know when you're when you're embroidering on thick fabrics if it's too tight that needle is going to bust on you but just for uh, what we call uh, hits and giggles let's just knock that down to 1.0 and just see if that makes a difference just to look at it enter oh yeah see that's that's that is tight that's really tight and I've done knockdown stitches on other designs on other software where it's so tight that the needle broke and jammed and messed up my machine so let's just take this let's do this at 2.0 and see what happens at that that's a little too loose so let's do 1.5 again apply all right there we go now i'm going to left click on the screen there we go let's do a let's let's left click the auto stipple and change the color we'll make it a lighter color there we go and then left click and then let's do play for a stitch simulation and see how it's going to look now Normally, your knockdown stitches that they create are X's and X on X's. They do a lot of, uh, you know, close X's for your commercial built-in uh, knockdown stitches. But this does this 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 is not this doesn't look that bad, does it, guys? It might it looks pretty good. So there it is. So you're knocking down all that high fluffy towel first, and make sure when you do this, you're going to use your water soluble, the clear water soluble stable on top of the fabric plus your normal hooping that you do for towels underneath okay and then the stitch out right there now in a future video i will be doing a stitch out and showing you in real time the embroidery but i don't have time right now i'll do that probably next week maybe sooner who knows you know me but i want to show you this right away to give you guys an idea of how beautiful that is just absolutely beautiful and remember when you want to get out of something just so you don't repeat something over here on the left there's a little arrow that says select click that so you're out of everything so you don't like like i showed you earlier doesn't when you touch something it doesn't repeat but isn't that great now you're going to save this like you normally save it okay like uh you're going to go file you're going to put uh, save as and then i'm going to go to my design now you don't save as a blf if you have a brother or baby lock because that's a that's a working file that's not your language file you're going to go here and you've got your PES 876, regular PES. You have Elna So, Janome Jeff. You have all these different formats that you can save it in. So that's great. You can save it in all these different formats because that's what's still great about this software. It still works for other uh, languages. So you can edit here and save it for the language of your brand machine. Okay. Plug it in, give it a test drive, and see how it works. Uh, let's look at the lettering now. Let's look at the lettering. Let's look at the fill for the lettering. It's a satin stitch. Density is four. I like to bring my density down to three. I do. I like a little tighter density on my satin stitch. Apply. Okay. Now I'll go ahead and resave this again. Because sometimes if you're using finer embroidery thread, it can be too sparse, should I say? And we like a little tighter stitch, so that'd be great. All right. So now you resave this again and stitch it out and see test test get some old towels that are rags guys and practice and test and see how it turns out for you if you know a better way of doing this with this software custom works here by all means please post in the comments below this is what i come up with i have to sew it out and test it yet but i think i've pretty much accomplished something of what i want to do using this software i hope this helped you all thank you talk to you later love you bye <laughs>